Welcome back to how to premiere your video at 380p. Break it down. Oh, we're jumping right into it. I, I didn't even get to do my intro. What's what's going on? Whoa! Oh! Oh! This is uh, uh this is the events of the last game. Yeah, there's the music, dude. So this is, I guess, what it looked like to everyone else. It's not what it looked like for us, but I'll accept it. We come back. We think about offing ourselves for like at least 20 seconds. Oh wait, we're not there yet. The production value on this thing has already gone through the roof. Oh. <laughs> All right. What's going on, YouTube? Welcome back, but most importantly, welcome to Milk Outside a Bag of Milk Outside a Bag of Milk, the follow-up to Milk Inside a Bag of Milk Inside a Bag of Milk. I had a lot of fun playing it. Um, I didn't know there was a sequel, but here we are. Uh, I'm really excited. This looks like already in, like, better than the last one somehow last one was really good um if it's anything like the last one we're gonna really be worried about this developer because goddamn, i was worried about the developer in the last one i uh, assume it's gonna be the same way in this one but i hope you guys are all doing good hope you've all had a good day i've got my door barricaded back there snoopy's back there keeping watch for me Let's go ahead and get into this. New game. Oh, this is so cool. I'm walking to my room, trying not to look around. Playful shadows dance around me here and there. They dash all over the walls, the ceiling. One of those shadows whizzes past me, touching my face ever so slightly. I, s I smile and continue walking, paying it no mind. Sometimes it's so easy to lose self-control and track of time, spinning in a joyful dance. But I'm in a bit of a hurry here. Mom told me to go to bed. I walk past the kitchen on the way to my room. 
The door is shut, but I can still feel the chilling air coming from the other side. My first thought is that there's a living corpse blowing into the keyhole, laughing mockingly. That's your first thought? Jeez. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> that's so silly. Yeah, si <laughs> I'm absolutely sure we have no corpses in our kitchen. I would hope so. I know for sure that we've never had any corpses in our kitchen. I'm absolutely sure that. And then they don't finish it because there's been corpses in the kitchen. I break into a run and dash toward the closed door. The shadows intensify their chaotic dance. Are they trying to stop me or calm me down? I don't know. It doesn't matter right now. Don't you get it? I wave my hands around as I run, trying to chase away my annoying pursuers. But then I suddenly realize that I won't be able to stop in time. I've got no other choice but to break the door now. If there's somebody inside, I'll surely scare them to death. But wait, how can I scare to death someone who's already dead? What if it actually revives them? No, 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 no. I don't want that. What do I do? I couldn't fully complete my thought, but my shoulder hit the door and it flew open. Hi. As I expected, there was no living corpse inside, but there was a bag of milk I bought a day sitting right in the middle of the table, watching me with its unblinking eyes. I stare back, nothing happens. Sorry, I just got chills. Uh, although, what exactly did I expect? Gratitude? Have I done something that warranted it? A bag of milk probably doesn't care whether it's on the shelf, in a store, or on the table in my mom's kitchen. You don't know that. On the other hand, nobody would drink milk inside the store, which means I took it from the safest place in the world into the scary unknown. I'm so sorry, you poor thing. Talking to a bag of milk. All right. Fair enough. I turn away in shame and leave the room in a hurry. I only bring others trouble. No, that's not true. I walk toward my room through a narrow corridor. Hello, mother. How are you today? I meet a familiar formless creature at the door. It locks me in its clutches and starts sniffing every inch of my body like a hungry dog. I'm not struggling. I know it's useless. I just stay silent and door its tight grip that stops me from moving. After sniffing me from head to toe, the creature holds out its ugly paws, bearing a single claw, thin and sharp like a blade. That's the mother from the last one, is it not? I don't know. Again? I stare questioningly into the monster's bottomless eye sockets. Don't move! Not moving! The creature squeezes my hands until my veins start bulging. Oh god. I just keep staring into the black cavities where its eyes should be, ignoring all the pain. I've promised so many times. Stay put! Jeez. The moment it says that, its claw pierces my arm. I don't feel anything other than the barely discernible crawling under my skin and the ring of tightly sprung sinews. But then, then the claw injects its venom into me. It hurts. A white veil appears in front of my eyes. My fingers cramp and start twitching frantically. I lose control over my body and slowly slide to the floor, just like last time, but why? Why do I feel so hot? I feel my blood boiling up. Strong shivers run through my body, paralyzing every single cell, while my veins and arteries heat up, almost bursting from that pressure. I try screaming, but instead of producing words, I vomit thick. Oh, God. I vomit thick, milky foam. The creature notices it and throws itself at me in anger, grabbing me by the throat while keeping the 
poisonous claw inside my arm. Kill me! Kill me! Hysterical screams resound through the corridor in a fit of madness. The creature starts scratching my neck. Bright splashes fly everywhere, hitting the walls with a loud sound. I try to imprint where every drop fell in my memory so I could gather them all later. I need to remember. I need. A new wave of pain washes over me. Everything turns bitch black in an instant. Did I say bitch black? Bitch black. Say it! I'll never drink milk ever again! I'll never drink milk ever again! I won't do it! I promise I won't do it! Let me go forward, okay. I... Say it! I'll never drink milk ever again. Say it again! Jeez. I'll never drink milk ever again! There, there it is. I'll never drink milk ever again. I won't do it, I swear to God. I'm not, I'm not even going to think about milk, see? Completely white from my mind. That was easy. Completely empty. Hello. I finally get to my room. I'm so tired of all this fuss. Thankfully, I still feel comfy and warm in my room. Even the weird sounds coming from the outside don't make me anxious at all. I think they should. I, if, that, if that's what you're experiencing in the rest of your house, I don't know that your room's much better, friend. Uh, okay, fuck it. Mom told me to go to bed, so I need to perform all the needed preparations. I've washed my face, and now I'm standing in front of the mirror with a toothbrush in my mouth. I see that. I look at my reflection. It shows absolutely no desire to sleep. Yeah, I get how you feel. I do. And there was a time when the last minutes before I sleep were my favorite time of the day. I loved anticipating the inevitable moment where the reality and the dream world would clash. I woke up for that moment's sake, lived through the day for it. My biggest dream was to sleep all day long. It would have been so cool. But the dreams always slowly but surely slipped away as if somebody fished them out of my head one after another, one after another, until nothing was left, and now I have to sleep again, even though I don't feel any need for it. That's a lot of pills. Jeez. After finishing with my face, I usually reach out for my pills. It's funny, but I have no idea how they work separately, since I always swallow them as a bunch without thinking. Now I want to have a better look at it, to twirl it between my fingers, to chew on it. I'd do anything to stall for just a little bit more time. A smooth, protruded red capsule is looking at me. It's covered in a murky, semi-transparent film but I can still discern its contents. So what do we have inside you? I gently press on the capsule from both sides and to my surprise, it turns out to be soft and squishy. I press harder and the capsule pops. Sticky bright red liquid pours out. Filthy, filthy! The pill flies straight to the waste bin and I start rigorously washing my hands. No, there's no way I'm drinking that. Next was a flat pill of the same blood red color. There were some letters printed on it. Oh, I get it. This is the medicine that makes me really sleepy, but it's not the type of sleep I want. That's not it at all. It's fake. No, no, no. I don't even want to look at it. The pill flies into the waste bin as well. The next half an hour goes by in a similar fashion. I study every pill from all sides, and then I find a reason not to swallow it. I invent my own medicine instead and enjoy swallowing them one after another, letting myself drown in their healing effects. Hey, my neck doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my hand doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my head doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my heart doesn't hurt anymore. 
and my stomach doesn't hurt anymore. My eyes don't hurt anymore. How come I didn't think of this earlier? This is so simple. I need to brag about it to someone right away. But not to my mom. She'll just scold me. And she's sure I'm already sleeping anyway. I don't want to disturb her without reason. I think of something myself. Besides, I just really want some small talk. I wonder, who's going to be my conversation partner? Jesus. Hey. Hi. Uh, can I... What do I do? Uh, hey. Ooh. Hey, long time no see. You know, we're only supposed to meet once per day, right? Why does your voice sound so grim? Uh, beca because... Because you seem to need help, friend. Naturally, I've read the manual. Judging by the pictures, the overdose side effects are the usual headaches, dizziness, exhaustion. Basically nothing I can't handle by myself. After all, now I know how to do it. Aren't you even a little bit happy? Not even the slightest bit? I'm happy for you. I'm pretty exhausted after today. Well, I guess you are too. That's not true need to go to bed. No, you've been in control for way too long already. It's my turn now, all right? I'll just stay silent until the medicine's effects wear off. How about that? Hey, you can't do that. You need to do your best to make me feel better. That's exactly what I'm doing. What a bully. Actually, why am I even worried about this? And in reality, I don't need you at all. I'm so energetic and I feel great, which means I can do anything. And you, you can only watch and agonize over your uselessness. Talk your shit. Talk your shit. <laughs> I can imagine how angry you are right now. I'm not at all. What made you so happy all of a sudden? And why would I be sad? Remember yourself a couple of hours ago? I don't know what you mean. I can only choose stop lying. Alright. Nuh uh. I still don't understand. Whatever. Unlike you, I won't forget that pathetic, snotty girl for a long time? Oh. She just whines and whines all the time. I don't want to say this stuff to you. Don't even try ruining my mood. I want to have fun while we're together, alright? Are we depression? Are... Are we depression? No. So you're the one calling the shots now. Yeah. Well, let's see how long you can last. I... We'll see. Yeah, I... This might be the first time I'm rooting against us in a game. I want this girl to... To, to win. I... Am I really that pathetic? No, you're not. Say something. I can feel tears streaming down my cheeks, hanging from my chin, and then falling on my clothes, burning holes in them. That was fast, but not unexpected. Hey, at least I tried. Go wash your face. Then we'll decide what to do with you. Thought we already washed our face, though. I'm in front of a mirror again. I keep staring at my reflection, trying not to get distracted by the sneery looks the walls are giving me, I'm trying not to drown in their giggling. But then me in the mirror also shows me a creepy smile, bears her teeth at me. I shut my eyes, but that doesn't help. It wouldn't have helped even if I sunk through the floor. I start counting in my mind, two squared, two by two squared, a square squared. 
A square pyramid squared, a pyramidal structure cubed, a pyramidal structure hypercubed. I feel better. But my head is splitting apart now. Sorry for being rude. It's not your fault. And I feel like it is. It's never your fault. Uh, fine, you can keep on blaming yourself, but don't overdo it. I don't know why, but I thought I'd be able to take control. I was almost ready to. I was sure I'd be able to change something after all. I was able to buy milk, you know? Yeah, you won't have to know how challenging it was. Is that why you threw away the medicine? What a stupid decision, right? Whatever it was, it was your decision. Does it even matter? Yes. Somehow I find it hard to believe. Then why did you do that? I felt like I'd be able to fight it on my own. It's true. The pain subsided for a bit at that time, but now I feel it triple in force. It hurts so bad. You know what to do. Dejected, I reach out for the shelf of my medicine. I swallow the pills one after another, chasing away the unpleasant visions that keep floating up in my memory. And yet, my mind still draws a terrifying picture. Lumps of coagulated blood and transparent coating travel down my esophagus, scratching its soft walls, leaving behind furrows. Jesus. I shake my head violently. I don't care if it makes me feel dizzy or worsens my pain. I just don't want to think about it. something so repulsive. All right, I'm about to really kill the mood, but... <laughs> you still haven't changed. What do you mean? You're afraid of being alone. This worries you much more than pain. Yeah, I guess. I toss the last pill into the air and catch it with my mouth. It's pretty impressive, to be honest with you. What's up, G? I like your cut. I lie on the floor. I look at the ceiling. I can clearly hear water running in the metal pipes up there. I hear the cracking of concrete blocks that will someday surely fall on my head. But I'm not afraid of that at all. I can't imagine my death coming from above. Rather, it's rearing its claws from somewhere below, waiting for me to lose focus. I keep getting paranoid, to be honest with you. Jesus. This is dark. Do you want to talk about it? Probably not. No, I've had enough time. I've had enough of talking, yeah. What do you want, then? I don't know. I just want to lie down for a bit. Okay. That's fine. She can't turn the mind off. We're her mind. Watch. We'll give us another option. There we go. Can you stay silent, please? Alright. I'm sorry. Need to get my thoughts in order. I'm sorry, I should have stayed silent. I just wanted to be reassuring. I carefully extract thoughts that are yet to be fully formed from my head and lay them out on the ceiling in orderly rows. Now it's my cork board. In hopes of seeing the whole picture, I switch them from one place to another, pile them on top of each other, scatter them around. In the end, I throw them off with my hand, annoyed start over. I can't do it. You can always imagine your thoughts as something small and swarming, like cockroaches. Ew, I hate cockroaches. Yeah, me too. Can I make them fireflies? I don't mind either way. So pretty. It's the fireflies. Look at them swirl. I don't even have time to blink before my thoughts. They're, flyer f they're fireflies now start whirling all over the ceiling of their own accord, forming whimsical patterns. 
I can only observe them and wait for the right moment. It's just that moment doesn't come. The mocking sounds of flapping wings coming from the ceiling make me start losing my patience. Enough! I hate you! Is she talking to herself? I spring to my feet and scream at the top of my lungs. The fireflies scatter. Good job. Now start over. No way. Unstable behavior makes you look bad. I don't give a damn. So that doesn't bother you? Should it? No, it shouldn't bother you. A lot of people act like this. Really? There's nothing shameful about snapping at someone if you have a reason for that. You did have a reason, didn't you? You'll surely get better, believe me. Yes. Please encourage this girl. And now start over. <laughs> You're at it again. What do you mean? Never mind. And I've changed my mind anyway. Please don't stay silent for this long anymore. I'm having a hard time without your help. I think we're her, like, her conscious or her mind, guys. At first I thought we were, like, maybe we were depression because it was only giving me options that were kind of fucked up. But maybe we're just her, her mind. Her wandering mind. Fine. I raise my eyes, look at the ceiling once more. Sadly, all my fireflies seem to be hiding somewhere. I need to find them. I glance around the room. There are too many places for a creature as small as a firefly to hide here. They can be anywhere. Suddenly, I hear a deafening rumble. The clock just hit midnight. It's so late already, but I can't go to bed right now. Will you help me? Please tell me you will help me. Come on, stop bullying me. You promised to talk to me. What were you thinking while lying on the floor? What do you mean? You should know it better than anyone else. That's the thing. I have no idea. This is weird. Will you tell me? I... What was that? I roll my sleeve and start rubbing my eyes intensely. They are so itchy. Why are you crying? Why are you? Why, my eyes are itchy. Did he bring? Did did? Whoa whoa whoa! What did you bring milk? I, I I wonder if I tear out all my eyelashes one after another, will my eyes stop itching? I I wonder if I tear out all my eyelashes one after another, all my eyelashes. One after another, if I tear out all my eyelashes one after another. What have you done? I need to gather the glass, and then, then I need to have a bath, and then, here, drink some milk. No! I stand in the middle of the room, my mouth agape, gasping for air. I think I just experienced death. I don't know any other way to explain what happened. Well, that was surely something. Yeah. Jesus, dude. What? Like... This is gonna make me all fucking depressed. <laughs> Will you tell me or not? About what? Let's look for the fireflies instead. You're acting weird. Help me instead of running your mouth. I've already had enough adventures before bed. I need to gather my thoughts quickly and go to bed. And my thoughts are hiding from me. <laughs> to be honest, I have no idea where to look for them. Me neither. I guess we'll have to tear the whole place apart. No, 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 and no! If I make even the smallest of messes here, I'll feel really bad. All the things should stay in their places, and that's it. Why? Are you trying to come up with a reason right now? You don't have to tell me if you don't want to. You don't have to tell me if you don't want to. I don't, and I won't. Okay. 
All right then, so we need to find a bunch of tiny insects inside a mountain of junk without moving anything even an inch. Yeah. My, oh my. I have an idea. Last time, becoming a visual novel character helped me achieve my goal. Now I want to become a point-and-click adventure game character. You know, those games have moments when you just look at different objects and something inevitably happens. It sounds so fun! What about the things you use regularly? Do you refuse to touch them as well? It would make it even more interesting. This is so childish. And want to know what's the best part? You'll be the one doing it, I'm sure. Oh no. <laughs> Oh, yes. I start panicking as soon as I get in a multiple choice situation. I'll just keep changing my mind and end up crying the wrong way. Do you want that to happen? You're such a handful. Come on, don't be so boring. I was just teasing you. You don't have to bear the whole burden. Asking for help is a reasonable decision, too. Let's begin already. I go to the middle of the room and look around. Where would I hide if I were a tiny firefly? My heart gets warmer from the pleasant anticipation. Hey. What? Look down. I look down after a moment. A small ball of light and warmth crawls out from under my sweater. Wowie! Wait. <laughs> Whatever. No, are we on fire, dude? Carefully grab the firefly, it's pleasantly scorching to the touch. I put it on my shoulder. I'm sorry, little guy. Time to come home now. As if it was in order, the firefly slowly drifts up, circles around my head for a bit, and then flies into my ear with the speed of a bullet. <laughs> it tickles. One down, let's look for the others. Yeah! Alright, we got one, guys. I'm just waiting for some fucked up shit to- Oh, I found the fucked up shit! I found it! Uh, oh, oh, it did really- ah! It really did turn into a point-and-click adventure. I can't click on that, okay. I get close to the waste bin and look inside it with curiosity. Pill packaging, notebook pages of the garbage. Boring! There's nothing here. Indeed, no self-respecting firefly would hide in a heap of garbage. Yeah, no self-respecting firefly would do that. I can't disagree with you here. Damn, yeah, to be honest, that's freaking me out. Turn my eyes to an inconspicuous shelf near the mirror. There's a glass with a toothbrush sitting on it. And a small towel is hanging nearby. What a wonderful sight. My fireflies are smart and good. They would never get in there. They know about personal hygiene. All right, let's look somewhere else. Uh, boom. I tilt my head backwards and almost fall over. The closet is hanging under the ceiling, at least 300 feet off the floor. That may be a little bit of over over exaggeration there. Are you joking? Even though it's my room, not everything here is for me to use. Whatever. I don't care. Yeah, I don't care at all. Like, totally. And I'm definitely not worried. Not even the littlest bit. Not even a smidgen of the littlest bit. Not even for a thousandth of a percent. That's how much I don't care. Damn, you really don't care. You just be not giving a fuck. Hey, I'm not even done telling you how much I don't care. From this moment on, I'm ignoring you. <laughs> oh, no, you don't. Then act normal. Wait. Right. Insects enjoy pollinating the flowers and stuff like that. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, that's literally what I was thinking. I get close to the flower shelf. I sniff around. <laughs> Oh, the leaves smell of dust and cardboard. <laughs> Imagine just fucking, like, wa wafting up with dust. And death. Oh, I didn't even read that part. I didn't read that part. And death. Got it. You know, those plants are long dead, right? 
I'm not sure a dead plant will be able to attract any insects. I don't know. Well, we kind of don't have a choice here, you know? Still, you're right. Let's continue searching. Why don't you just throw them out? Weren't you listening to me at all? To be honest, I wasn't, which I feel bad about. All right. Uh... Well, I, guess... I look at the amount of pills and it makes me feel dizzy. I don't want to think about it. I don't. What's wrong? I've almost dipped my dose for today. How reckless I could have died. Hey, calm down. You've already fixed that. You'll have to be dying anyway, so I worry. Hey, calm down. You've already fixed that. Yes, because you ordered me to. Things could have been much worse. Is that an accusation? Of course not. It's what... It was what saved me. Well, that's reasonable. I hear you a deep sigh come closer. I extend my hand. Wow, it's warm. The moment those words leave my lips, one of the bottles overturns. Pills rain down from it and along with them. A firefly! Hooray! After circling above my head a couple of times, it finally lands in my palm. The firefly rushes up my arm, and upon reaching my shoulder, crawls straight into my ear. My mind becomes a bit clearer. Your usual notebook pages glued to the wall with duct tape. Numbers are drawn on them. It's the only kind of information I can take in without trouble. Dotions and side effects? Yeah. I thought you know them by heart. Yeah. This is not your handwriting, isn't it? Of course it's not. Shaky, broken lines, ugly numbers. It's not writing, it's more like claw marks. Don't forget to thank your mom. I don't need your advice. A scream makes the pages rustle restlessly. After a moment, a firefly appears from underneath one of them. After looking around in a business-like manner, it takes off into a business-like flight and ends up entering my business-like ear. Hey, let's continue searching. Jesus. I look at the alarm clock. Time continues with unstoppable flow. It's so late. Hold on. It's so late. Are you tired? You bet I am. I let a theatric yawn and hold out my arms to the sides. One, two. Then I raise them above my head. Sorry. Three, four. Maybe a little workout will help me freshen up. Good idea. Do you remember the exercises you've been taught? I think so. God, those eyes, dude. Uh, I take a hesitant stance. What was it? Heels together, toes apart? Whatever, I'll go with that. Count down five minutes. Fine. You have a clock right in front of you, though. I can't look at its hands for too long. At first, I feel like they start moving in the wrong direction, and then they disappear altogether. And then things always get messy. Last time I saw a pair of eyes on the clock face. And also, I used to hear voices back in the day. They pleaded for help, I think. What a mess. Truly a mess. Those eyes in the back make me feel like I'm being watched, and I don't appreciate it. I was a- it was a mess, right? A mess. Well, are you counting down? My god, finally. What do you mean? I was trying to get through to you for half an hour. Huh? Forget it. Do you see the firefly? N no. Let's continue searching them. Jeez. It just- sometimes it feels like we, like, are forced to beat her down, and I really don't, like, want to. How many things do we have to get through here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten more things, it looks like. Jeez. Eleven. All right. Back to it. What did I just do? <laughs> All 
I look at my laptop. I haven't touched. Is that supposed to? Okay, I I haven't touched it for years. It's covered with a layer of dust as thick as my finger. Damn, a bizarre item. I fear it. Why? It's a long and boring story. Wonderful. Tell me about it. Hmm. I insist. I don't remember how it appeared in my room. One of my parents probably brought it here because they couldn't find a better place for it. They didn't prohibit me from using it. On the other hand, they encouraged me to do so. Sure, I've spent my whole days in front of the screen. Games, drawing, engineering, calculator, 3D modeling. You're smart, huh? So much fun stuff to do. You had amusing hobbies. Yeah, I did. Before entering the web. Hmm? I imagine this. You're a hamster that lives underground. You have everything for comfortable living. Did you imagine? As always, your analogies are spot on. Okay, I imagine. Alright. So you're a hamster that lives underground. You have everything for comfortable living, okay? Okay. Wonderful. And here's the situation. You're a hamster that lives... Okay, I got it. Do you want to talk about something else? Hmm. Yeah. Fine. Suddenly, a firefly slowly crawls out of the laptop's vent and grill. I reach for it. It gets on top of my palm, blinking all the while. I think it's trying to say something. I can see that myself. If only I knew what. Looks like a cipher. Don't you want to crack it? I changed my mind. I have absolutely no desire to find out what it wants to say. <laughs> The firefly stops glowing for a moment after that. Then it starts glowing again as if coming back to its senses. For some time, it thinks about the further course of actions. Then flies up and dashes into my ear. Let's continue searching. This is like a master class on... Finish. I kind of want to keep going, though. This is like a master class on, like, mental illness, dude. Jesus. Are you serious? What's wrong? Just think about it. Why would fireflies be attracted to light? I think they're quite self-sufficient already in that regard. That's fair. That's fair. Well, only if they purposely want to lower their self-esteem. Hmm. Like you. Huh? I want to search everything, but at the same time, like, I want to... I'm sure this is going to do something, like, crazy. Uh, finish searching. <laughs> I've managed to gather my thoughts, but something still worries me. On the other hand, I wasn't supposed to be happy anyway. No, that's not... That's not true. Why not? If I lose something and then find it, it's just going to back... It's just going back to the starting point. No changes at all, a zero sum. And happiness is always about being positive, right? No, that's... no. You shouldn't think too much, it hurts you. I want to sleep. How about you get some fresh air before sleeping? What do you mean? Well, go to the balcony and breathe in some air. Somehow those words triggered a panic attack in me. I subconsciously step away from the balcony. I don't think it's a good idea. Oh. This may sound silly, but I feel like someone is watching me. Well, you're not wrong, honestly. All right, let's stay here. Let's stay here. Yeah. What are you going to do? What's with this silly question? I'm going to sleep, of course. Hoping that tomorrow will only come after a year or a decade. Imagining myself to be outside of my mortal shell, but at the same time still being me. Ridiculous, like milk outside a bag of milk, and yet, and yet, you don't have to talk out loud for me to understand that you're worried about me. I'm very worried about you. I know that already. I also know that our time is running short. You won't take another pill. Of course not. In fact, I won't take it tomorrow either. And the day after tomorrow. And never ever. That's a goodbye then? No. I have one more small favor to ask. A really, really small one. 
What is it? I blurted out way too much today. A lot of stuff I'd want to forget forever. I don't blame you, but was it really necessary? You'll see tomorrow. I wouldn't be able to sleep like this. Fine, what's the favor? I, um... I never should scratch my wrist and bite on my lower lip. Wait a minute, you're afraid to tell me. Yes. I'm also scared that something bad might happen if I tell you. I'm also scared that when something bad happens, something way worse will happen. Stop, I get it already. Well, I'm being rude. Still, I won't leave you alone until you tell me. Bully. No, you. Confused as to what we are, but... This can only be bad. She's sleeping or trying to sleep or something. I crawl into my sleeping bag. The lower part of the room is very cold. I hurry to wrap myself in blankets even though the electric heater is working hard to keep me warm. I'm sad because the dreams just won't come anymore. You won't believe me if I tell you how I dealt with it at first. Of course I'll believe you. I know, it was a joke. Well, anyway, I wash my face, brush my teeth, lie down, and start imagining that I am watching a dream. I didn't sleep at all. Of course, I'm always looking sleepy in the morning. After a week of insomnia, I started feeling weird and seeing things. Letters floating in the air, strange silhouettes that appeared in the most unexpected of places. Bulging eyes with trembling pale pupils. It was scary, you know? Sounds scary. And one day I almost died, I just collapsed in the middle of the room and couldn't move for a while. And then, silhouettes, letters, and eyes were hanging over me and hissing. It was horrible. And well deserved, I guess. It felt like I was caught in the biggest lie in the world. Yes, it felt exactly like that. After that, I stopped. But the silhouettes, letters, and eyes stayed here. I guess they like this place. They always follow in my wake, peeping at me, and I'm kind of scared of them and can't even argue with them. But today? Today? Well, I... Still too scared to tell me? Of course! They're still listening, you know? Use your hands. Alright. I start chaotically twirling my fingers with enthusiasm. Forming complex shapes. You want me to tell you a bedtime story? Shh. And I was trying so hard here. Don't you get it? They'll hear you. Relax. Nobody can hear you. So what do you say? I'd be happy to, but I have no idea how to tell you. Oh, it's incredibly easy. Just talk about something without stopping. Sounds silly. But it's not. And meaningless. You don't know what you're talking about. I know enough to realize that we'll just end up wasting time. Let's focus on something actually important. Boring. Fine. Close your eyes. Oh, this is about to get... This is about to get fucked up. Yep, there it is. <laughs> Alright, this is that classic look. I wake up on a wooden bench. In front of me lies a narrow, dimly lit alley. An awfully familiar road. Where could I have seen it? Finally. I hear a voice coming from the side. I turn around and see a boy with a weird expression on his face. Hi. You're late. Uh, who are you? The boy blinks in bewilderment. We're not going anywhere like this. Try again. Then he takes a very deep breath. You are late. I stared at him confused. He stares back, also confused. Sorry? The boy nods, satisfied. The boy looks creepy as fuck. See? Much better. Do you have a name? My name's Tresca. I give the brat an evaluating look. He's so young, yet already coming at me with questions like that. None of your business. 
And besides, will anyone tell me what I'm doing here? Hey, that's rude. It's not like there's somebody else here besides me. Haven't they told you anything? I know all there is to know, for one. About what? You're obligated to escort me to the store. Tresca says that and strikes a victory pose. No way I'm doing that. You do understand that refusal is futile. Well, aren't you full of yourself? I'm serious. I believe him. Look at them eyes. Look at them killer eyes, dude. I'm not the one who decided that. Do you think I'm delighted with your company? I would hope so. Little bitch. He's weird. Constantly shifting between happiness, sadness, loudness, silence. He's a wacko. And his name is stupid. Yeah. Fuck that guy. Fuck Tresca. Are we going or what? I don't know. You can go and I need to think. I'd be happy to, but I don't know the way. Tresca puts on a cunning smile. I bite my lower lip in frustration. We seem to be biting our lower lip a lot in different uh, responses or moods, I guess. I'll be honest with you, I don't like you. He simply bursts out laughing in reply. I do like you, though. Then he grabs my hand without hesitation. I don't even have time to retort. Lead the way. Our trip to the store went fine, if not for the fact that Tresca was walking way faster than me. And on the other hand, at times he stopped abruptly and went backwards, thudding the ground underneath his feet. In the end, the trip took a lot longer than it should. After reaching the store's doors, we were greeted by a sign. We are closing in 20 minutes. Snatch. Is that what that says? All right. Who had the bright idea to indicate their working hours in this way? They probably have special staff for this. Someone who runs to change the sign every five minutes. It's convenient. Are you joking? Yeah. You're so annoying. It's much better than being boring. How old are you, by the way? This is... I can't tell who's talking to who. Uh, none of your business. Ah, uh, uh, uh. What's your name? None of your business. I was ready to slap the living hell out of the brat, but a scary-looking man suddenly appeared behind the glass. He's holding a cardboard sign that says we're closing in 15 minutes. Let's go. What are you waiting for? Huh? Oh, yeah. This is the store from the first one. After another round of going across the long row of canned products, we realized that we are lost. I can't believe you don't know where they sell milk. I... Uh, maybe we should ask somebody for directions? Sure. Hey, wait up. Tresco lets go of my hand and walks confidently toward one of the few store's customers. That person is standing with their back to us, studying something on the shelf. Hello, can I? I can't hear neither the second part of his question, nor the reply he gets, but my good-for-nothing friend freezes in place. Looking the customer straight in the eye, I hurry toward them. Is he yours? customer talks to me. He speaks with disgust while wearing a scornful expression. I, uh, if he's yours, please get him away from me. <laughs> yeah, he's a freak, I'm sorry. I grab Tresca's hand and lead him away. He's still looking at the customer. His mouth ajar and eyes pop. He's also shaking. What the fuck happened? Jesus, Tresca. Only when we turn around the corner, Tresca calms down. What was that? I I got so scared, he said. What? No, not again. Suddenly, Tresca starts screaming like crazy. I cover his mouth with my hand. His face is burning. He's crying. Can you act normal? You don't understand. Of course I don't. I don't understand anything. Annoying other people is still wrong, though. This is something you don't understand, it seems. You're mean. Who, me? Mean? No. We're only mean to ourselves. Tresca pushes me away and runs away. Bye, Tresca! Can't say I'll miss you. Drat. At the edge of my vision, I see the store staff hang, hang a new sign on the door. There you are. I meet Tresca at the cash register. Before that, I managed to visit the milk department after finding out where it was. Hey, you, move! hear an angry voice coming from the other side of a long queue that has formed after Tresca. I squeeze through toward him. What happened? The boy doesn't respond. He just looks at his feet and sniffs. The cashier towers over him. There's a bag of milk lying between them. 
Is he yours? Yes. Just leave him home next time. People in the queue non-agreement. Pay for the goods, please. Yes, of course. And the waiting fee. There's a waiting fee? What? You heard me. I did, but that's unheard of. Kreska starts giggling all of a sudden. And for the fact that your son is a retard, too. Jeez. But, but. You heard me. You know what? In a fit of rage, I threw a banknote to the cashier. A much higher value than needed. Even counting in all those stupid fees. Then grab a bag of milk and turn around on my heels. We're leaving, Tresca. We spend the whole trip back in silence. At some point, we end up turning right toward a gas station. There, Tresca finally breaks his silence. Do you like ice cream? No. Okay. I look at the boy's face. A light flickers in his eyes for a brief moment and then goes out. You know... He turns away from the path and walks straight toward the highway with determination. I stare at his back, confused. That's a little creepy. Seems like you're not helping me at all. A new playful light flickers at Tresca's eyes. We're awake. Why are we crying? Milk, outside a bag of milk, outside a bag of milk, a game by Nikita Ryukon. Wow. <sighs> Nikita, are you okay? Like, like really, are you okay? I... I mean, jeez. Uh, well done, just like the last one. This one, I mean, this one topped the last one in a lot of ways. Um, for a little bit there, I, I was honestly nearly on the on the verge of tears. It it, it handled uh, mental illness very well. But, um, you know, I think I could fix her. <laughs> I think I could fix her. I'm the one. Notice all the, all the dialogue options I picked throughout this whole thing were all the, the nice ones. Because, you know, I'm a, I'm a gentleman at heart, guys. I'm a gentleman at heart. I could fix her. But, uh, I guess this has been Milk Outside a Bag of Milk Outside a Bag of Milk. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great day and a great week. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye bye Break it down. Break, 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 break it down.